This is a Phoenix. It's not an actual Phoenix, it's just a model that I 3D printed using my resin 3D printer. As you can see, it's not a very detailed print. It doesn't have a polished surface and all around it looks like petrified wine. But it does have a cool property. It burns pretty quickly. Like I said, it's not an actual Phoenix, so it's not coming back. This video was brought to you by Altium Designer. If you mix sugar and saltpeter, you get a mixture that burns pretty quickly. And believe it or not, this is actually used as rocket fuel. Apart from being a high-energy food, sugar is not that special. What makes it burn quickly is the saltpeter, which is a combustion enhancer, an oxidizer. In the past, I tried mixing sugar with resin to 3D print fuel for my hybrid rocket engines. But then I realized I was looking at it all wrong, because resin itself is already a fuel. What would be cool to try is mixing an oxidizer in the resin and then try to 3D print it. To test this hypothesis, I mixed 60% saltpeter with 40% 3D printing resin. To cure the mixture, I used the UV curer that I have, but you can use a cheap nail curer. Once the mixture was hard, I took it outside and tried burning it. It burns better than regular resin, but it's pretty slow and it leaves a lot of residue. I tried increasing the amount of oxidizer, but the result wasn't much better. Also, I need to 3D print this. If the mixture is too thick, it won't work. For a while I gave up the idea, but the other day I was lurking around the NASA website, as I normally do, and I found out saltpeter is not even a very good oxidizer. There's better ones, and apparently the best one is ammonium perchlorate. It's what NASA uses in their solid rocket boosters. So, I got some ammonium perchlorate and I repeated the experiment. This time I did three mixtures. One with 50% oxidizer, one with 60%, and one with 70%, and I burned them. From the three, the one that burned the best was the 70% mixture, but that one was too thick to print, so I went with the 60% one. The burn rate was still pretty slow though, so to help with that I added a little bit of iron oxide to the mixture, which is rust. I added rust to the mixture. And that, my friends, didn't really help. Before I tried to improve the propellant, I decided to print something, and what I printed was that phoenix you saw in the beginning of the video, which is pretty cool and still not coming back. At this point in time, I thought it would be a good idea to 3D print some actual rockets using this technique. And I say it's a good idea because I have tried to cast some rocket grains in the past, and trust me, it's a messy process. Another reason why it would be a great idea to 3D print rocket fuel is the grain. You see, rocket fuel can have a lot of different internal shapes that increase surface area and performance. These shapes are normally a pain in the butthole to get, but with a 3D printer should be easy enough. I designed some different rocket grains with different internal shapes, and I 3D printed them. They didn't come out perfect, but they were definitely usable. And burnable. Hey, do you know what's the difference between a bomb and a rocket? A nozzle. I don't really want a bomb, so I guess I need a nozzle. I had my fair share of rockets blowing up on my face, so I guess the important question here is... How do you design a rocket nozzle? Well, a rocket nozzle doesn't need to be something fancy. It can be just a hole that has a smaller diameter than the combustion chamber. And you can eyeball the dimensions for sure, but if you're looking for the best performance possible, well, you're gonna have to do better than that. If we look at this simple example of a rocket, a whoosh bottle, we can see that even just the throat of the bottle works as a nozzle, and the bottle is propelled forward. But if I put on the lid with a smaller hole, the performance gets better. And with an even smaller hole, the bottle goes even faster. So the dilemma here is how small can I make that hole before I have a bomb in my hands? Or better yet, what are the best dimensions for the hole that will get me the best performance possible? Well, the highest performance comes from the highest exit speed. The faster the gas goes, the faster the rocket moves. And as it turns out, the max value is the speed of sound. The speed of sound is the limit for the exhaust speed when we are dealing with a simple hole or a convergent nozzle, because the flow gets choked. But NASA doesn't use a simple hole, do they? They use the Dulaval nozzle. Sponsor time. If you like to develop projects like me, it's likely you're gonna have to incorporate electronic components somewhere. Motors, sensors, actuators, an electric dog? Whatever you use, you're gonna have to control it, and for that purpose you might need to design a PCB. If that's the case, well, let me suggest you Altium Designer. Altium Designer is a PCB design system that enables makers to easily design and create custom PCBs that fulfill their needs. 
They have a very intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. If you need a professional tool to design PCBs, use the link in the description down below to start your 15-day trial. By clicking the link in the description down below, you're not only taking your projects to the next level, but also helping me make more videos like this. And to that I have to say... Sas e faristo. Back to the video. Yeah, I never really understood the Laval nozzle, because in normal conditions, if you make the hole smaller, you get higher velocity flow. But then, all of a sudden, when you reach the speed of sound, the only way to make it go faster is by expanding it. It makes no sense. In the end, it all comes down to the definition of speed of sound. Sound is a compression wave, because air is a compressible fluid. You can't compress it, like a spring. Water is an incompressible fluid. No springy action going on. Before any gas reaches the speed of sound, we can pretend they are incompressible, and the math works out just fine. But when they reach the speed of sound at the throat, they stretch so much that their density drops aggressively, almost like a reverse shock wave. We can no longer pretend they are incompressible, and the Bernoulli equation goes out of the window. The only option left is to expand those choked gas molecules so they can run free and faster. To design a Dulaval nozzle, you start by imagining a combustion chamber that can generate gas enough to maintain a certain chamber pressure, despite the size of the nozzle. Of course this is an ideal case. In reality you have a specific propellant with a limited area you can burn. What you do is, you define a chamber pressure, and then you get all the important parameters for your propellant. Which are these. Once you have that, you can calculate the exit velocity using this ugly equation. If the value you get is bigger than the speed of sound for your exhaust, Congratulations, your rocket deserves a Dulaval nozzle. Then you need to arbitrarily define a diameter for your throat, and use this other equation to calculate the area of propellant you need to burn to keep your chamber pressure, taking into account the throat diameter you chose. If the area you need to burn is bigger than the one you actually have, you either get more area to burn or you make the diameter of the throat smaller. Once you reach what you need, you can use this equation to get the diameter of the expansion part of the nozzle. And that's basically it. This is a grotesque oversimplification, but it does illustrate the basic process of achieving the final dimensions. I did all of this to design my nozzle, but because I had no idea of the performance of the 3D printed fuel, I kind of pretended I was using rocket candy, which is sugar and saltpeter. So, I have a design for the nozzle, but I still need to make it. In the past I tried many processes to fabricate nozzles, and they all failed miserably. So this time I decided to follow your advice. I got some graphite blocks and I used my CNC machine to get the geometry. Graphite can withstand temperatures up to 3600 degrees Celsius, and it's pretty easy to machine, even though the fine dust makes a mess everywhere. I could only machine one side of it, so to finish the other side I used my drill press. With the propellant grain and nozzle ready, I used an acrylic tube as body and I 3D printed some plugs in resin to hold everything together. Assembling the rockets was actually very easy, and to my surprise all the dimensions were perfect. To measure thrust I 3D printed a yellow support to hold the rockets over the scale I used to make them. The rockets weighed about 45 grams, and I started by testing a 50% mixture with the star grain. The maximum thrust was about 10 grams, which is either sad or an error from the scale. Either way, I tested another one. Yeah, that was depressing. And just bad construction because the grain wasn't burning how it was supposed to. I really wanted to see some decent thrust out of the 3D printed rockets, so I made a 70% oxidizer mix and I was able to print it using the Prusa SL1S. This printer has a tilting tank that mixes the resin while it prints, and that made all the difference. A pulse jet rocket engine? Jesus Christ. Still intact. Works pretty well, huh? 
this one performed much better, with a maximum thrust of 140 grams, and it even produced some shock diamonds, which are inefficiencies, but pretty cool. Unfortunately, I never know when to stop, so I decided to test another propellant. A few videos ago I made nitrocellulose, which is one of the fastest burning propellants you can get. It actually is used as gunpowder nowadays. I crammed a bunch of it into a rocket and when I tested it, this happened. Oh my god. I wasn't expecting that violence. I mean, I knew it was potent, but Jesus Christ. I think that this idea to 3D print rocket grain might be a great one, but I think I need to do more testing. If you want to help me get there, please use your 3D printer to try it by yourself. If you don't have a 3D printer, well, let me help you with that. On my last video, I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was Andrew, and he suggested that I could build a Da Vinci's flying machine. I'm not sure if that would work. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. Well, um, this is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya! Go away, fly. Please. You're ruining my audio and my video. Can you please leave? They love the lights. Literally.